Sox. Let's go ahead and welcome in Scotty Hughes right now. Scotty, always a pleasure to get a chance to talk to you here. You've got to be feeling pretty good about Donald Trump, but wait a minute now. Let's hold back because we do that. We play both sides here on this show all the time. Nothing is inevitable yet, Scotty. There's still a ways to go. Donald Trump's got some work to do. You're not gonna, just going to hand this to him right now, right? No, and I don't want him just to be handed a, a win like this. But you have to look at the polls were correct tonight. This was exactly yes. the trajectory of a win that we were expecting. Now, what happened in Iowa? Why were the polls so off in Iowa? Especially polls that had a tradition of being right on. So now going into South Carolina, what changed? Do you change anything about the ground game? We sat there and do you ignore the polls in South Carolina? So there's a lot of questions that the Trump campaign is going to be waking up to in the morning. But at, the, at least going to bed tonight, they feel pretty good about the win and what they accomplished here in New Hampshire. All right, so let's get your opinion on this right now. We're heading for South Carolina. Ted Cruz is going to get a big evangelical vote there. It looks as if Jeb Bush is going to survive. Of course, you have Marco Rubio, who's looking to get back off his heels. Chris Christie is basically going to make an announcement tomorrow, and it looks as if he will drop out of the race. Carly Fiorina says she's still going to stick around, but let's be very honest here. She's way down in single digits here. She has very little chance, if any. So if you're looking at this field right now, Scotty, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and put it out on the game board right here. Who is the one? And again, Donald Trump likes to go after everybody. He's an equal opportunity insulter when it comes down to getting to people, and that's what people love about him. He spits it out and means it. Who's the person that he's got to take on tooth and nail right now and go after? Well, that's the thing is, I don't think he has to go after anybody. Tonight's win shows that he is definitely heads above the rest. Not even John Casey? Look at Jeb Bush. Not even John Casey? I don't even think John close? No, because John Casey talks Ohio values. He's still pro Common Core. He still is pro uh, single payer health system, which is different from what the universe or pro universal health care. His message is not going to resonate in the South. Plus, if you look at South Carolina right now with the endorsements of Trey Gowdy with Marco Rubio, and you also have Lindsey Graham with Jeb Bush, you've divided the establishment. So I guarantee Kasich right now is kind of floundering out there. He doesn't have a base, and the people that right now can take advantage of it are the even evangelicals, more of, like you said, the populist, that's a Ted Cruz or a Donald Trump. Right now in the polls, Donald Trump is leading. Also, don't forget, Jeb Bush just spent $36.1 million in New Hampshire. That's coming off of a very expensive Iowa as well. His coffers are not as recharged, and we're already hearing that his donors are not refilling them as quickly as they put the money in the first time. All right, let's ask something here about Donald Trump. People always say they love Donald Trump because he, and I'm looking right at that, right at it right here, the, the quote, tells it like it is. His best showing came from voters who want that candidate who tells it like it is, 63%. And those who want a president from outside the establishment, 57%. Those are huge numbers to look at. But, Scotty, let's look at it this way. Tell it like it is. Great thing to say. Is that a platform to run on? How do you win on just that? Because that's called trust. When you tell it like it is, whether you like it or not, you're building trust with the people because they know they're looking at the same person they're going to see once they're in office. That's something we're not seeing right now in our Republican representatives in Congress. I think that's one of the issues that people have with Marco Rubio and Senator Ted Cruz right now. They were elected as very Tea Party conservatives. However, when they get up there, they vote for things like the TPA. They also don't do everything they can to stop the taxpayer-funded abortions that are in President Obama's uh, budget plan. So it's things like that that make people not trust our current Republican leadership. And I think that gives Ted Cruz, whether you like or Donald Trump, whether you like what he says or not, at least you trust that he's going to be the exact same person today as he will be a year from now when put in, put in the White House. Is Donald Trump the candidate, and I know you're going to say yes, but I want you to tell me why, who can unify the Republican Party and bring together what many people have called a fractured group of politicians? I think he's already done that. You cannot sit now, there and look I don't, at the numbers that we Scotty, have. I'm, I'm going to take, take umbrage with you there a little bit because mm -hmm. there's a lot of people out there who say that st he is still a divisive influence. So let's be very honest here. People say it's a fractured party because you've got a lot of infighting going on. You can't say that he solved it yet, but can he solve it and how? But 
But you have to look at the people that were not involved in the Republican Party that he's brought in. Those people were considered to be fractured and splintered before. The numbers that we have for these debates are just astronomical for people viewing. The people that go out and vote, we've now had two states that have set record numbers of people voting. Those people were, fran were, were disenfranchised. They were fractured off. They were even ignored. Now, let's look within our own party. I do believe that when you get down to it and you talk about the two issues, and we're talking about the evangelicals within the Republican 15 Party. 15 seconds. When you talk when you talk about security and economy, I guarantee those two issues right there can bond and unite anybody if they really care about this country and more importantly about their own families. I knew if I asked you the questions about that, you would have an answer right there because you're always good about that indeed. Scotty Hughes, always a pleasure to get a chance to talk to you. Thanks so much for joining us.